This morning, I want to talk about the planting of the Lord. I think about Nancy, who loves to go out in the dirt and paw around and plant flowers. And uh, she has quite a large backyard, and she tries to put flowers everywhere in it. And I was thinking of that because she's not able to do that anymore. Sometimes we can't do the things that we once did, but you know what? They can't stop our spirit. They can't stop what motivates us, what pushes us forward in the presence of the Lord. And so I want to talk about this today, the planting of the Lord, you know. Um, today's message, this is a blooming season. It's time for the buds to come out. I mean, overnight they came out. Uh, everything was barren, and then you got up one morning and came out, and everything was green. You know, so I'm not sure this will be a message that you will rise up and run the aisles. I, I loved it when I talked about the God is green, and everything green is filled with God, and I'm, in, I'm still experiencing that because I have to go down this road to get here, and there's trees on both sides, and I just go like, God is hugging me this morning. So I want to talk about the planning of the Lord in this blooming season, you know. You know, some like to do it, some like to watch, some like to not even notice. But you know what? We need to notice every time the buds come forth, every time the trees turn green, those that uh, do colors, because it's a sign of resurrection. It's a sign of resurrection, you know. That means that... God has given us a moment to remember the glorious resurrection that he came forth triumphant from the grave. And I tell you some church, I need resurrection. How about you? Yeah. We need to be more tomorrow than we are today. We need to have more word than we had yesterday. We need to love God more than we did yesterday. We need to grow in the power of his presence and do even as as the music uh, went forth today, that we are planted here for purpose. We're planted here with reason. And so while this, it might be just a message of dirt and seed, it's also a God has given a purpose for us on earth. And so he didn't just plant trees, which I'm going to talk about, but he planted us. He planted us here. And so we, I want us to notice what is God doing in my, in my life? Where am I going? How, do I, how much more do I love him than yesterday? How much more willing am I to do what he asked me to do today than I was yesterday? Because we cannot stay the same, church. If we stay the same, we become stagnant. We have to have the flowing river of God moving through our existence. So I pray today that we will learn some spiritual lessons from the things that God has planted to show us his glory, to show us his creative power. The world thinks they got power. The world is trying to mess with the creative forces of God. That's how I know that our country is doomed if they don't return to God. Because you cannot mess with the creative power of God. I mean, can you even imagine, can we even wrap our head around what the world is trying to do with the creative powers of God? I say this all the time because I'm so mystified that they can get away with it. Because I know that the day is coming of judgment upon the earth. So this message came into my spirit. I started to look at what God planted, and then I got excited. I think I got too excited because I noticed this morning as I put my uh, papers together that I've gone two pages longer than normal. So I, that may have to be part two, but anyhow, nonetheless, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That doesn't just mean the preacher. That doesn't just mean Isaiah, because Isaiah is the one that God spoke to. But the Spirit of God is upon us. And church, what are we doing with that Spirit? What are we doing with that power that lives within us? What are we doing with the presence of God that's moving in our life? 
It says the Spirit of God is upon us to preach good tidings. That's not just for Isaiah. It's not just for me and Donnie, but it's for the whole world. Sunday school was teaching that this morning. The songs that we sing show it. The Word of God shows it. You know, we need to spread forth our branches and we need to let our roots grow in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and quit uh, uh, finding we ways to whine and carry on, but to thank God and to worship God and to praise him in the difficult seasons of our life. So he's anointed us to preach good tidings. He's anointed us to bind up the brokenhearted. You could speak a word in season and help somebody's heart that is broken. And we're to to uh, comfort all that mourn. I read this scripture and I wept because it, to point unto them that mourn in Zion, if it's ever a mourning day, it is a mourning day in Zion this very day. They are in shambles. Last night, uh, Huckabee had two men uh, on his program that talk, talked about what happened to them. One was a doctor, and he he heard a message from his brother that he that all this all this uh, stuff was going on the war the the you know things that came in the air and all those kinds of circumstances and he was caught in a place and so this doctor decided he would go find his brother, and he had the two men on and they talked about all of the heartache in Israel and they talked about what they did to them. And and uh, the governor said, well, you know, I know it's graphic, but could you tell us something that will stir the hearts of Christian people to pray for Israel? And they told us, you know, how things were. And I don't even want to get into it, but I just want to say that if, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon us, there is mourning in Israel there is a spirit of prayer that should be up on the hearts and the bodies of this people today because God has planted us here with purpose. Sometime you look at your life and you think, well, my life didn't turn out the way I wanted it. I haven't got what I wanted. I didn't do what I wanted. I've got a bucket list that's never been completed. And we think that, you know, we get caught up in those things. But our life, the scripture we read this morning, is more than meat and remnant. It is something that is powerful in the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost. And it says to point, and this is the scripture. And you know what? As you start to pray for Israel and you start to pray for the Jews and you start to pray for them, when you read the scripture, you're going to find they're everywhere in it. God is prophesying right here today in Isaiah that they are mourning in Zion, that there's mourning going on. And it says, you know, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, you know, I'm sure they're overwhelmed with mourning. I, I don't have words to describe even what these two men told us. But, you know, it says that God wants to give us, you know, beauty for ashes. I mean, sometimes we've had some things happen in our life and there's a little pile of ashes there and it gets swept over there and we keep remembering that it's there, but we don't do anything about it. But the Bible says that he will, he will give us oil of joy. We need to have the oil of joy for those little pile of ashes and get rid of them and give God the glory and, and sing a song unto the Lord and take on the garment of praise, church. If there was ever a day that our, our country needs a garment of praise, it is this day because there is so much turmoil and wickedness and corruption that we talk about it more than we talk about the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we know how to pray. So the oil of joy is the very help and hope that we have to have in our heart and our life. And I've read this passage so many times, but today it means something so special to me. It says that they might be called what? trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. What is your purpose? You are planted on this earth if by the power and the anointing of God, the creative forces of God to bring glory to him. When you don't bring glory to him, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And that's not so hard to bring glory to him, is it? It's not nothing that we have to do that's so taxing because in the middle of our heartache and our sorrow and our problems and our difficulties, if we just know that he will give us the oil of joy for that. And the Bible says that we are to be trees of righteousness. Well, what are trees? 
Don't you enjoy a nice shady tree in the middle of the summer? Don't you enjoy the beauty of the evergreen that never dies? It's a symbol of God. And God planted these things that we could have uh, these uh, experiences. You know, in Sunday school, we put up little pictures so that the children can see the sheep and they can see the trees and they can see that. But you know what? Here is the greatest platform right here that God has given to us. He had puts up the trees today to show us that they are the planting of the Lord. And what God expects of his creation is that they grow. He expects the trees to grow. He expects them to come forth in resurrection power when it's time to bud and bloom. And thank God we live in Iowa because we can see the drought and then we can see them bloom and we can understand that there's a picture of, re of, of resurrection going on in our own life and in our own city. I, Psalm 69 says, 6935, it says, for God will save Zion. You know, when you start to have devotions and you're praying about Israel and you're praying for the Jews and you're praying for, for uh, those things, you'll begin to see scriptures everywhere popping out of what God wants to do for Zion and how he's going to help them. So this, this scripture says, For God will save Zion and he will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and that they may possess it. Verse 36 says the seed. Now we're talking about seed. We're talking about seed growing and prospering and being important. And the scripture says the seed also of his servants shall inherit it and they that love his name shall dwell therein. That is a prophetic word this morning, not only to us, but to Israel, because God is going to clean up the cities. He's going to fill, fill up the waste places, and he's going to, you know, God, give us peace to Israel. He said, pray for the peace of Israel. So while we pray, God is working behind the scenes. But, you know, when we pray for Israel, we pray for ourselves because the God of Israel lives in us. And what revelation, what prophetic word, if our Jewish friends could only see the planting of the Lord and they could only come to Messiah, God would, God would recreate everything for them and make them in a special place of peace. And that's what we pray for. So as we look at the scripture, it says that we might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want to ask the church this today and the church at large, you know, what are we as Christians doing to glorify the Lord? How are we growing? How are we prospering in God? Everybody wants to prosper, you know, but the prosperity is not in what we have, church. It's not in food or raiment. The prosperity is in the power and the anointing of God if we will use our life for the purpose that God has planted it. You know, we are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Well, trees are strong and powerful, and they come forth in resurrection power every spring here in Iowa. What kind of beauty is seen in Christianity today? You know, we don't realize that when they look at us and we call ourselves Christians, they, there should be a beautiful thing there. They should see the power and the glory of God. They should not see our weariness. They should not see those things that so easily beset us and cause us to be so nasty sometimes. They should see the glory and the power of God in our life. You know, it's, it's hard to be nice. It's easy to be nasty. It's easy to retort in anger. You know, all you have to do is have a problem at work and we bring it home, you know. We have a problem with the computer and we bring it to a fleshly person, you know. But God wants us to be his fruit in the earth. He wants us to be a planting of the Lord, you know, that he might be glorified, that when we speak with somebody, we have fellowship with somebody, we come into the house, we feel the presence of God and he is glorified that we've gathered here today, that we've gathered in his name, that we've sang the song of praise and that we've glorified him church we cannot glorify the lord enough he is coming soon so very soon one way or the other he's coming through the valley of the shadow of death or he's coming in rapture but he's coming church he's coming for a people that understand that they were planted in this earth by him for purpose you know, sometimes we think our jobs are our purpose, our families are our purpose, but the purpose is to glorify God. We can love our families, we can appreciate our jobs, we can do all those things, but he must be 
glorified in our life. So what beauty is there in Christianity today? God has planted multitudes of Christians in the earth. You know, are we doing our job? You know, I wonder why there's so much corruption in our world. Maybe those that have been planted to to uh, grow up in power and might, you know, maybe are not doing their jobs across Christianity because we are so um, 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 enthralled with beautifulness and greatness and bigness. And pastors have forgot that two or, where two or three are gathered together, God is there, you know, and they think that they have to work, work, work to have a big, big, big church. But you know what? God is the one that gives the increase. And if he, does, if he gives an increase that you work and you put him second place, then the glory is spent on your work and not on him. And I say that to the church today, where we, we, we love our church, we beautify our church, but not only do we beautify our church, we beautify the power and the presence of God. And we say the word that we do everything we can to glorify the word of God in this house. So we read in the Song of Solomon, and, and, and husbands, it'd be really nice to just read this uh, Song of Solomon to your wives, you know, and, and, and expedite your love for one another because there's a lot of lack of love in our homes today. And, you know, we get caught up in the turmoil of life and all the crisis that we have and the shortage of money and all the things that's going on in our society and the guys go to work, maybe most of the women work too. But, you know, you come home and there's a lot of things on your mind besides loving one another and being kind to one another and showing forth Christianity to one another. So I encourage that today. Song of Solomon, second chapter, 12th verse. It, this is a song of songs, and it says, The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in the land. How many think we're too busy? How many think that we're so busy we cannot, we cannot hear the song of songs? We cannot realize that the flowers are coming out. We cannot realize that there's something to sing about and to be worshipful about and to give God the glory for what he has done. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing the, of the birds is coming. I know at our house, I know that, that Toy rises early in the morning and puts out her bird seed. And we both have maps on our phone to hear the chirping of the birds, you know. But who has time, we think, who has time to sit there and tur turn it on and sit that quietly and listen you know, and, and you'll hear all the chirping that's going on. And, and on your phone, it can show all the different birds. We saw some, some strange birds I've never seen that was right there in our backyard chirping. You know, we, we, we miss those powerful things because uh, flesh is so busy. And I just, just want to encourage the church today that you were created with purpose. You were created to understand God. And how do you understand him? You understand him by his creation, by the birds, by the flowers, by the trees, by all those glorious things that he's given unto us that would cause us to have glory and beauty, that we might praise him and worship him. And yet we as, we as uh, human, humans have just got so busy that we don't have the time to sit and worship him and to understand that he made these things that we could relax, that we could see his power and his glory that he has given to us. So I'm asking you, do you hear the birds chirping early in the morning? You know, do, 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 you, do you see the flowers bursting forth? Because so, so soon they will fade, so soon barrenness will come. And yet there will always be a newness of life in Christ because he will always come forth. And I, I just, I, I know it's not a powerful message this morning about the, those things, but I want us to see the glory that God has. I've preached several sermons in this, in this order, and that's because when I get uh, heavy laden, I want to go out into the park. I want to get out. I want to get out in the presence of the Lord and just sit quietly. And I think that we need to do that. And I want to challenge every one of you sometime this week, just go to the park, just sit on your a bench somewhere and hear the power and the purpose of God because it will, it will infiltrate your being with his presence because all of this stuff is what God has done for us that we might glorify him. 
In the psalmist, Psalm 115, David says, I love the precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. That's my prayer today, that as I talk to you about the beauty that God has given to us and the purpose for which he has placed us on the earth, I think his most prized possession that he has created and placed on planet earth is his people because he desires his people to worship him. He, he bore the Israelites in the Old Testament, but what did they do? They hung their harps upon the tree and they wept and they did not know him in the, in the vein that he wanted them to know him. So therefore he sent his son and he come and brought the message to the Gentiles that we might hear and understand and worship him and flow with the power of his presence in the earth. And David said, I, I love thy precepts. I love everything about you, Lord. Quicken me, O oh God. I pray that God will quicken me, quicken Christianity to the power that God has as he lives in us. This is my prayer today, that we might be mindful, that we might be quickened uh, to God's beauty. Well, what, what does quicken mean? In the dictionary, it means to come alive. When God says, quicken us, when David says, quicken us, he says, God, help me come alive. In the word of God, there's nobody more alive than David. I mean, David suffered and David pursued God with all of his heart. He made mistakes, but he kept on pursuing God. And, you know, when we look at that, David is the one that says, God, help me come alive. I'm, I'm doing these things, but I'm not like alive like I want to be. And I pray that Christians will begin to pray that prayer, Lord, quicken me, cause me to come alive. And it also means to burn like fire. How many ever burned your body in some way? You know, you just burn your little finger and it's just sore for a month and you hold it up and you just kiss it and you do all sorts of things to get it to feel better. And it's just one little finger because burning, burning, burning is a sensation. God wants us to have a sensation of power and grace to him that when we pray that our soul rises up and there's a burning in our heart for more of him that we might grow and produce because he put us in this land. He planted us here with purpose. There's no one in this congregation today that has not been planted in this earth without purpose. And you just look at God and say, God, teach me my purpose. Give me strength and power and knowledge to know my purpose in the earth. And, you know, his purpose starts here. And as we do that purpose, he gives us more purpose. And then we do that and he gives us more purpose. We grow in the power of his purpose and his grace. To be quickened also means to have a rapid pulse. When do ever we feel a quickening in us bodily when we worship God? You know, there needs to be a quickening in our spirit. We need to have a sensation, a goosebump, something that shows us that we felt God. Do you ever come into the uh, presence of Satan and the, the hairs of the back of your neck stand up? That 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 that's a that's a moment of knowledge you know get ca cast it out or get away from it or back off from it or give it to god do something and god is giving those things to us all the time but we are so busy we do not uh we do not receive those things we just think oh i just i felt like vomiting or something you know or i had heartburn but you know god is speaking to the church today He's speaking to our lives. He has planted us with purpose. And if there is ever an hour for the purposes of God to be revealed in his people, you know that God is dealing with Israel. God is there. He's there in the midst of all their strife. He's, he's wooing them. He's trying to bring them to the knowledge of who he is, that they will depend upon him. And they do depend upon him to a certain degree. And God always spares them. I know he will bring us through he will bring them through this but I want them to come to know the Messiah like we do to have that spirit burning within them that God is more than just all the the the, the instructions that they had but God is a godly thing with the spiritual movement within them well you know after Jesus body came forth from the grave the scripture says he was quickened he was quickened from death to life 
And you know, that's what needs to be done in Christianity today. We need to forget all the things that we're doing on the side and be quickened by the power and the anointing of God. And God says, go this way, then we want to go that way. And if God says, pick up the phone and call, we want to do that. And we don't, we don't care if we're wrong or we're right. We had a quickening. We had something in us that nudged us, and we did what God asked us to do. You know, the world is trying to get power. Oh my goodness, the computers are just so powerful and we carry our phones and oh my Jesus, help us. We, we have all this kinds of power and the world, this AI that's coming on, I cannot discuss it. I do not know those kinds of things. But this AI thing is something that is going to really bring a lot of heat upon our world you know, because they'll be able to do things that, that they shouldn't do, and it will not glorify God. And I tell you something, there is only one power in the earth, and that is the power of the living God. And there's only one power that will survive. It is the power of the living God. They might show their muscle, but it's only flesh, it's only muscle, and it will not reveal, it will not maintain against the power and the anointing of God. And you know what, church, we feel that, don't we? We feel that in our lives. We feel that in our work. We feel that even in our play. We can't hardly take a day off but to keep from worrying about something. But I tell you something, the power and the anointing of God that he has for his people. He lives in us, church, and we need to recognize that and know that he planted us with purpose in the earth. In Isaiah 60, 21, it says that, the God is speaking and he says, we are the branch of my planting. You know, we didn't just happenstance church. Maybe your birth was a happening. Maybe your birth was whatever. It doesn't matter. God brought about that birth and God planted you in this earth. And the Bible says, we are the branch. You are the branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I might be glorified. God wants, he doesn't want just glory and praise. He wants us to love him to that degree that it is a gloriful moment when you come into his presence, that it is a powerful moment when you come into his presence. Well, you know, John 15, 5, it says, I'm the vine, and what? The you are the branches. You think of yourself as a branch of Christ? Does Christians think of themselves as a branch of Christ? They call themselves Christians. They wear the pennants. They wear the crosses. They say they know God. But, you know, I ask them this question. Do they know that they are a branch of Christianity? So how do they live their life? How do they magnify God? How do they worship God? What depth do they have in their heart toward God? Because they're a branch of the living God. He says, I'm the vine. You're the branch. You're a part of me. You're connected to me. It's awesome, church. And it says, he that abideth in me, then I will abide in him. And the same bringeth forth what? Much fruit. Not just fruit, church, but much fruit. So we have to look at that. How can we bring much fruit? Some of us work jobs. Some of us have responsibilities. Some of us have they're not here today because of the children. They got problems with the children. But, you know, we have, we have busy things going on in our life. No matter what age we are, we have busy things. But we have to stop and smell the roses, the rose of Christ. He is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. And he has a fragrance that we can feel and sense if we can ever find time to sit in his presence and glorify him. Oh, church, we need, to, we need this so much. Jeremiah 17, 8, it says, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out their roots by the river. His leaf shall be green, and neither shall he cease from yielding fruit. This is what God wants of us. He wants us to be trees of righteousness, the power and the glory of God. Now, church, we know this. We know this. But it, our leaf has to be green. It cannot have a faded spot in it. Our leaf cannot brown because what happens when the leaves get brown, church? It withers and drops off the tree. 
but we are connected to a living tree that never dies, that came forth triumphant from the dead and gives us eternal life. And if we will get, stay attached to the power of God, if we will be the branch that we should be, God will empower us and God will strengthen us and God will keep our leaf green and God will cause us to be to spread our roots, Lord, and our roots will give us the strength and the power to stand. A spiritual spring. I, I pray for a spiritual spring. I don't know if that's in the Bible, but I pray for a spiritual spring that the church of Jesus Christ will get, get near the waters of the spirit that's flowing and will cause ourselves to grow stronger than we've ever been. You know, we know that we're stronger when we handle a crisis with dignity and Christ. We all have crises. You know, I have to get on the phone and talk to somebody about the phone company. They keep putting us in the phone book, and I've never put them in the phone book. And I was just so upset because I still got this notice, and I've responded to it many times. And I was just like, <laughs> you know how that is. And it was like the Spirit of the Lord said, you're going to preach on my righteousness Sunday. And I said, so your righteousness does not do that. I'm sure that you're angry. And I, t I talked back to him, you know. I said, Lord, you know that you get anger at sin. But that didn't excuse me, church. So I, I said, I'm going to have to talk to them nice, you know. So I, I put, that, put it down, and I'm going to do it next week. <laughs> but you know what? That, God deals with us. It's the simple things of life where we don't show our righteousness and where we don't show our power and our strength. We have buttons in us, it seems, and things can push that button, and then we forget that we're on the branch. We forget that we're connected to God. And I, I tell this to the church today because we're all in this together, and we all have that problem. There's always difficulties. The enemy is out to defame the God's people. He's out to make us act like we don't belong to the branch. But I want to tell you something, church. If this spirit of, of God will get into us to that degree, we'll be able to handle our crisis with much more spiritual dignity because God is looking for him to, himself to be glorified in us. He's planted us with that purpose. So we shall be like a tree planted by the waters and we'll spread forth our roots, you know, of peace and joy and, and goodness and meekness and all those kinds of things. We'll spread those kinds of roots instead of the roots of anger and disappointment and fear. Oh, Jesus, <clears throat> I pray for a spiritual spring. I pray for an awareness, an awakening of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I think about Israel, and I think about how God is trying them, trying to bring them to peace, trying to bring them to his side, trying for them to realize that he is the Messiah. He loves them so much, but he has forsaken them to a point where he's dealing with them in, in a painful way, that they will come to know him, that they will call upon him. And church, we, we're so blessed that he brought his spirit to the Gentiles. I don't know that Christianity even understands the power of Christ that brought us to be a branch of the vine because we, we are not his chosen, but then he has chosen us because his chosen would not listen. And I know that you know this, but I am just moved in my spirit to know that Israel is so suffering. And if only they would know the Messiah, if only they would come to him. And I pray that in, in all of this, that he will protect them and, and keep them. And I know he will because the scripture says he will. But, you know, until they come to that place where he can be revealed in them, he, that he will deal with them. So it says, consider the earth and all the world's power and what they're trying to do today. I mean, they're trying to make people. They're trying to make animals. They're trying to do all sorts of things, but they will never, ever have the power of our God. Our God is the omnipotent God. He's the omnipresent God. He is always the power 
of God in our lives. So just consider this earth that he created it, that he planted me, he planted you on this earth with purpose. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. It doesn't matter the things that, uh, the losses that we have suffered in our life. It just matters that he's always there with his hand on our shoulder and he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You know, I want you to be planted. I want you to grow. I want your roots to, uh, to, to flourish and that you would bring forth fruit for the kingdom of God. Let the church see the beauty today. Let the church notice the creative things that God has given. Let, let us notice those things. Let us say to the Lord, Lord, I see that beautiful tree. I thank you for that. You know, there's purpose in that tree. It's doing its job. Let me do my job for you. Let me be a witness for you. Just let my life ooze with the power and the presence of God. And, 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 you know, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to do anything special. You just have to live like you belong to the vine. And, oh, God, help us to live like we belong to the vine. Let the, let the church see the beautiful today. Let them see the love that God has. Solomon 2, 1, he says, I am the rose of Sharon, and I am the lily of the valley. Lilies represent resurrection. They represent new life. They represent blooming spirit. You know, we need to bloom, church. The church needs to bloom, and the blooming is not having a hundred people in the church. Blooming is that if you have two, they love God with all their heart, and they're in purpose for the kingdom of God. You know, uh, Isaiah 35, 1 and 2 this morning. Oh, Jesus. The wilderness, let me, let me conclude with this passage of Scripture this morning. Isaiah 35, 1 and 2, it says, The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Take note that the scripture is talking about a wilderness. It's talking about a solitary place. You can be married and have six kids and, and need a solitary place. You need a solitary place if you don't have six children. You need a solitary place if you're alone. You need to have that solitary place where Jesus comes and takes your hand and walks with you through the shadows of this life. And the scripture says, so it's talking about the wilderness and the solitary place and the desert. Christians go through desert places. And it says he's there in the desert. You should rejoice and you should blossom as a rose. Second verse says it shall blossom abundantly. God wants us to be abundantly in our Christian experience. He wants us to rejoice with joy. I wish that you could see that scripture today. It says they shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it and the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. In these places, all these places of Israel, I, I, I researched it, but there's not time to preach it this morning. But you can look into the scriptures and you can see about Carmel and you can see about Sharon and you can see about Lebanon. The trees, the trees of Lebanon are still growing that grew in the time of Jesus since, since so many years ago. And the, and the trees of Lebanon are dying and there's only like 105 square feet left of the trees of Lebanon and they have it fenced off since, since the 1800s. They've faced off all these trees and it's called the Garden of God. I tell you something, church, we are privy to the Garden of God. We are privy to the power and the anointing of God in our life. And I just want to say to the church this morning that if you don't feel that in your heart and your life, you know, there needs to be a new consecration in our life that we will feel the power that God has desired for us. He wants to get into the wilderness of our life. He wants to get into that solitary place. He wants to get into that desert when we go through it. And he wants, you know, Israel used to be a desert place and we were there. And, the, and they, the, 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 our guide said, look, the flowers are blooming. And, the, and it's so true because it's in scripture. It says that the, the, the desert will blossom. The time of the coming of the Lord is close, church. It's time that we understand the purpose that we're here. We're here to do the things that glorify God, that we might be witnesses of the power and the anointing of God. 
You know, God created trees that we could see that they are strong, that they are powerful, that they reach up for his son. They reach up for his sustenance. And when are we going to reach to God for the things that we need instead of reaching for the things of this world? I want to say to the church today that in Scripture, it's there several places. We are the planting of the Lord. Not just all the trees, not just all the flowers, not just all the things, but we are the greatest thing that God planted on the earth. And he planted it, he planted us that we might glorify him. And I read this and I wept and I said, you know, we, we have a responsibility to glorify our God. How is that right? He is omnipotent, omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's everything, he's so powerful. And yet he created all the weaknesses <laughs> that's in humanity. He created humanity to glorify him. So you have purpose today. You have purpose today. You have purpose today. Do I get an amen? amen. You have great purpose today. You don't have to do anything special. Don't dig a ditch. Don't do anything. Just let the countenance of the God that lives in you come forth. And I tell you, there'll be an aura about you that people will want to know what is peculiar about you. And you will know that you are glorifying God. And you know what? Everybody can glorify God. Every human being can glorify God. No matter where we are in life, no matter what's happened to us, no matter what our past is, we can all have a future in God. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of your word today. Thank you, Lord, that you created us with purpose. Thank you, Lord, that you planted us and you have forgiven us and you want to rise up and bring glory in our life that we might magnify you, O oh God. Lord, I pray today that we will see your beauty, that your beauty will just pop up and we will see it, Lord, and know that it is created for our purpose, created for us to enjoy, created us for us to have sweet smells, to stand in the shade of your trees, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've created for us. And most importantly, God, thank you that you created us. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor. In Jesus' holy name we ask it.